and welcome to another episode of Really Dicey. Today I'd like to talk to you about a game that's near and dear to my heart. I love the old school renaissance. And when I go on OSR websites, I often see a timeline or history of the movement. And a lot of those timelines give this game the credit for being the first game, Crack Castles and Crusade. But this game was published in 2004. I'd like to talk to you about a game I think doesn't get the credit it deserves. Hackmaster. This is the granddaddy of the OSR movement, published in 2001, even before the open gaming license. This game has an interesting history. It started in the Knights of the Dinner Table comic strip. This comic strip started in 1990 by Jolly Blackburn, in Shadis Magazine. From Shadis Magazine, it moved to Dragon Magazine from 1996 to 2000. Fans of the comic, which is a parody of old school gamers, old school games, and the people who write them, fans of the comic quickly demanded a game based on the game that the characters in the comic book were playing. In the comic book, they were playing a game called Hackmaster, which is a really extreme version of AD&D. And like I said, fans really wanted to play this game. Problem was, Hackmaster was such a parody of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons that it couldn't be realized without the D&D rules. And that was really an impossibility of the time because Wizards of the Coast had them all sewn up. In 1999, something interesting happened. Wizards of the Coast um, reprinted some Dragon, of uh, some Knights of the Dinner Table comics in an electronic media archive but they failed to get the proper permissions. There was a resulting contract dispute, which was settled out of court. And as part of that agreement, Wizards of the Coast agreed to the creation of a derivative parody work called Hackmaster. And that's what we get here. This is the player's handbook. This is the Game Master's Guide. What I love about this game is that it has an incredible amount of attitude. <laughs> I haven't seen a game with this much attitude since Paranoia. As you can see, a lot of the artwork is uh, an a, a homage to classic D&D artwork, and the writing is uh, what can best be described as high Gygaxian. The trick about this game, to the, the trick of the parody anyway, is that the game is written by the fic a fictional company called Hard Eight and uh, that exists in the comic book. And all of the writers for that company also exist in the comic book. So there's kind of two levels to the game. As the disclaimer in the um, player's handbook says, the views expressed in this work are solely those of the fictional Hard Eight Enterprise and its fictional staff and not those of the real Kenzer and Company or its real employees. Remember, this is a work of, this is work is a parody of games and the people who play them as well as make them. The fictional company of Heart 8 and its fictional employees have written a very earnest, confrontational, old school game. Uh, this is from the In Fiction introduction written by one of the comic book characters. Quote, quite simply, Hackmaster is fantasy role-playing with an edge. For those who know the difference between epic and ordinary, killing and breaking things best sums up Hackmaster. There are those individuals of a weaker spirit who believe that role-playing is some artsy-fartsy new form of entertainment used to develop character, build inner strength, or somehow reweave the social fabric into something higher and stronger. Hogwash. To them, I say, back off, Jack. So there you get an idea of the, the attitude of this game. It's not only the confrontational um, manner of uh, the game, that's a parody. Uh, if you look at D&D history, every new edition of the game has come, become more prescriptive. So when the game first came out, it was really kind of a flying by the seat of your pants, mix and match, do whatever you like uh, sort of game. And then they added more rules as they went on and they got more and more prescriptive. Uh, 
am, there are different reasons why they did this. Um, but Hackmaster continues that trend. It is very authoritative. Uh, there is a fictional uh, Hackmaster association uh, with certificates and rules. And there's a, in the Game Master's Guide, there's an oath of, uh, there's an, a code of conduct and there are oaths to take. <laughs> and the book actually advises you to consult an attorney before signing the oath in the presence of witnesses. So that gives you some idea of how seriously this game takes itself. Like, like all the best parodies, the work takes itself seriously. We provide the humor. There are many, many cross jokes within this book. Um, there are many Easter eggs and nods to AD&D uh, and TSR. Um, like I said, all the characters that wrote the book, all the fictional characters that wrote the fictional game are characters in Knights of the Dinner Table. So there's many jokes back and forth between the comic and the book. So uh, like all the good parodies, the more you know, the funnier it gets. But the, um, the really amazing thing about uh, this game is that not, not, not that it's a parody, it's a great parody. The amazing thing is that it's also a very playable game. It's an actual game because these people really loved what they were doing. Uh, this is from the introduction of the player's handbook. We, the developers, were literally handed the keys to the kingdom. To all of us in the Knights of the Dinner Table development team, AD&D &D was and is hollow ground. So the, the way I always describe this game, the best way to think of it is imagine an alternate timeline. So instead of Wizards of the Coast buying TSR and coming out with third edition, Imagine TSR still exists and they make a third edition of advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And instead of streamlining the rules, they lean into them more. There's just more first edition, more second edition rules. Uh, so this game's like first edition plus second edition plus Unearth Akarna plus uh, Oriental Adventures, skills and powers. Uh, there are more tables, there are more crunch. The whole game is just over the top, um, there's, is, there's a game master screen with 32 panels. <laughs> there is a 16 page character sheet. There is a 10 volume monster encyclopedia. And this game is a massive amount of crunch. Um, you've got all the classic uh, classes plus more. Um, there are two extra stats <laughs> as if the ones we had weren't enough. Uh, the 17 in classes include a, quote, non-wuss bard <laughs> and 10 different versions of the fighter. Uh, there are 13 player character races, including pixie fairies, gnome titans, and thug halflings. To give you some idea. There are 700, or over 750 spells, ranging all the way from the cantrip wet willy up to the nuclear winter fireball. There's a critical hit and fumble table with over 7,000 entries, including five pages that look like they came from a medical textbook. <laughs> there are more than 700 magical items uh, ranging from the, um, the very classic and the very serious to things like hip waiters of protection the Staff of Indignation, uh, the Dagger of Hindsight, and the dreaded Feet of Vectra. <laughs> including, um, including both the Player's Handbook and the Game Master Guide, there are over 600 charts and tables, uh, including the Smartass Smackdown table. Two versions of that. This is in the Game Master Guide to help you deal with characters who are mouthing off. You roll on the chart and you can get uh, results ranging from a twitch to flesh-eating bacteria to undead relatives, all the way to instant death. So this game was in print up until 2019 when they brought in a new version called Hackmaster Basic and Hackmaster Advance, uh, which was kind of a reworking. And because they were no longer under a license, the same license with Wizards of the Coast, they were able to remove a lot of the parody elements. But I'm not talking about that one. That's a different video. Hackmaster 
um, they call it Hackmath or fourth edition uh, as a nod to both the comic book and to the fact that uh, Wizards of the Coast had just released D&D third edition. There's over a score of modules written for Hackmaster. Uh, most of them are reimagining of classic d and modules like Little Keep on the Borderlands, Robin Loft, and the Temple of Existential Evil. <laughs> this is a wonderful game. It is so much fun. If you love the, well, I was going to say if you love the comic, you should check it out. But if you love the comic, you already know about this game. But you should check this out. If you're interested in the, the OSR, uh, if you're interested in first edition, if you like a game with a lot of crunch, if you like making fun of old school gamers, if you are an old school gamer with a sense of humor, you should definitely check these games out. It is so much fun. Now, full disclosure, I love these games, but I don't play them. Why not? Because it's got too much crunch for me. I just, I just don't like, I, I don't like that group level crunch. I like a lighter game, but I love these books. I love reading through them. I love looking through them. I love the fact that there are actually people out there playing these games with uh, all these crazy rules. Um, this is a fantastic game, and I just think it deserves more love. So, hootie hoo! <laughs> so, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.